this is IGCSE 0460 where we learn geography for Cambridge. Today we are going to look at our topic development and in this segment we shall look at employment structure. By definition employment structure simply means the proportion of people employed in different sectors of the economy. Talking about sectors there are four different sectors in which people can be employed and number one is the primary sector which you remember as uh, take it this involves taking raw materials from the ground or from their natural existence for example growing crops uh, cutting wood uh, catching fish among others uh, activities here you could think about agriculture mining fishing lumbering etc and people could be employed as farmers miners and fishermen the next one is the secondary sector this you can recall as make it because it involves our transforming of raw materials into finished products for example the irish from the primary sector is being transformed into your favorite meal and this is chips and people in this sector could be employed as factory workers or carpenters or others and number three is the tertiary sector that you can remember as sell it and of course this involves a provision of services e.g selling goods which is known as trade transporting things which is transport and also provision of leisure activities which we know as uh, tourism people in this sector could be employed as uh, waitresses or waiters uh, drivers shop attendants teachers etc the fourth sector is called the quaternary sector and you will remember this as provided and of course this also involves the provision of services but specifically information for example research consultancy or counseling or ict services uh, you're going to do an activity i want you to pause this video for a bit and uh, read the question and be able to answer it as it requires let's go ahead now employment structures uh, differ with countries and this depends on the level of development so we are going to look at the differences in uh, employment structure between uh, different countries especially LEDCs MEDCs and NICs and uh, we are using pie charts so we are going to look at three countries and one is an LEDC which is our for example Kenya let's take a look at the proportions of people so in most LEDCs you will find that the primary sector employs the majority of the people in this case we have 74 percent people employed in the primary sector while in the secondary sector only 11 percent and in the tertiary sector we have 15 percent moving on to the MEDCs we have an example of the UK you can see that the primary sector employs the smallest number of people and that is only 3% while the secondary sector also has relatively few workers and this is only 18%. The biggest proportion of people are employed in the tertiary sector and this is a whopping 79%. On this side, let's take a look at a newly industrialized country, in this case Malaysia. You can see because it is uh, becoming industrialized the small uh, the, the primary sector is now employing only 15 percent while the secondary sector is employing 40 percent the tertiary sector on the other side is having 45 percent so this shows the differences in structures between ledcs and uh, medcs and nics so you're going to look at this activity describe the variation in our employment structure shown by the pie charts above now employment structure is not only represented on pie charts but also on a divided bar graph also known as compound bar graphs so let's take a look uh, from this compound or divided bar graph you can see that ethiopia uh, which is an ledc has 
a very large proportion of people in the primary sector you can see the blue uh, section of this bar it's very large and uh, the secondary one which is represented by red color is very small while the tertiary sector is also quite small uh, compared to the UK which is an MEDC you can see that the blue section of the bar is very small and that is the number of people in the primary sector and when you look at the green which is the tertiary it is very large employment structure of course is not uh, only represented on those other two graphs but you also have a very common uh, graph which is very common in uh, IGCSE exams and this is the triangular graph I want you to pause and uh, take a look at this graph try to study it and uh, be able to know how it works so each side of uh, this triangular graph represents a sector and it has corresponding lines marked from zero and up and in most cases it represents percentages which of course goes from zero to 100 for every dot on the graph uh, it represents three figures for the number or the percentage of people employed in each of the sectors so you must be very careful to identify which lines and figures correspond to a particular sector in order to know the values for each sector so let's zoom and uh, be able to look at some of the examples that have worked so Tanzania is an LEDC and uh, you can see you can see that our uh, on the lower line we have the percentage of people employed in the primary sector you could see uh, how it increases from 0 to 10 to 20 30 and then when we correspond this dot to that line you will see that it is 83 or around 84 percent so that means a large proportion is in the primary sector and looking at the secondary sector you can see how the numbers increase are 0, are 10, 20 and above and if we had to correspond the dot for Tanzania to the secondary sector it will only be employing 6% and then on this side this line represents the percentage of people in the tertiary sector and you can see how it moves from 0 to 10, 20 up, uh, coming down up to 100 so if we correspond the dot to the line, it will be 12%. So you can see that very few people are employed in the tertiary sector in LEDCs. On the other side, if we are to look at USA, which is definitely an MEDC, you will notice that if we are to correspond the dot to the primary sector, only 3%. You can see, follow the red line and uh, see on the primary side it is three percent if we had to follow it on the secondary sector you will notice that those horizontal lines uh, it corresponds to 34 percent and of course if we go to the tertiary side and uh, we draw the line it will follow to around 65 percent and of course this being an medc it has a large proportion of people in the tertiary sector so i have uh, labored to fill some of the figures uh, for usa and tanzania and some others for russia nigeria and brazil i want you to go ahead and look at these dots and correspond them with the right figures for the different sectors and uh, you're going to have another activity uh, it put the countries given on the triangular graph into ledcs nics and M E D C S. that will be after filling in the values so you might be wondering why does percentage of people employed in different sectors change as countries develop of course there are different uh, reasons for this and number one is uh, LEDCs have a high percentage of people employed in the primary industry and this is because many people must work on farms or in agriculture in order to be able to feed their families and also have something for sale so the fact that so many people are in agriculture that means 
uh, we have a large primary sector. And number next is uh, uh, as LEDCs develop, are uh, as uh, an LEDC develops and improves its technology, agriculture becomes mechanized. So you can see from the picture, and this means that fewer people are needed on the farms. So that would mean the number of people in agriculture or in the primary sector have reduced. And on the other hand, as a country begins to develop a strong industrial base, in other words, becoming a, an NIC or a newly industrialized country, there is an increase in secondary sector with more TNCs. Of course, that is uh, transnational corporations. And people tend to migrate to urban areas to get jobs in factories, leaving agriculture with fewer people. Uh, and then when a country becomes uh, becomes an MEDC, uh, people become rich and there is a greater demand for services such as education, health care and of course consultancy, tourism and therefore the tertiary and quaternary sectors undergoes growth and attracts many people. So you can imagine people are rich and they demand for more services and of course by this time, computers, machines, and robots replace people in the secondary sector, and therefore this leads to decrease in the number of jobs uh, in the secondary sector. Like we saw for USA, it has few people in the secondary sector, even though it is an MEDC. It's because much of the work in the industries is done by machines, and uh, people tend to demand for more services. And... Uh, MEDCs, of course, have also invested more in the tourism sector and therefore the many tourist attractions and facilities employ many people. This picture was taken from the Netherlands and I can see so many tourists around the museum shop uh, trying to enjoy. And uh, MEDCs, they have more financial resources to import more food and raw materials from other countries. Hence, only few people are employed in the primary sector. You can see that. And then uh, we also have exhaustion of minerals and closure of many mines in MEDCs. And of course, this is because they started exploiting their resources long ago. And now they have exhausted most of the resources. And this means that few people are employed in the mining sector, which is of course the primary sector. And finally, majority of people in MEDCs are highly educated and they are able to get jobs in the tertiary and the quaternary sector. And of course, very few would opt to work in the agricultural sector. So we're going to take a look at this diagram quickly. Uh, this graph shows how uh, the number of people employed in different sectors changes over time. Of course, we have stages, the pre-industrial stage, the industrial stage and the post-industrial stage. I want you to pause this video and take a look at these different lines and of course correspond them with, uh, with the key. So you can see the red line which represents the primary sector. So people employed in the primary sector are so many in the pre-industrial stage but it reduces so much uh, in the industrial sector and even further in the post-industrial sector. So take a look at all these other lines, pause the video and uh, follow and try to understand what happens. I will talk about the quaternary sector. In both the pre-industrial stage and the industrial stage, we have no one employed in the quaternary sector. But of course, in the post-industrial sector, as people become rich, as people are educated, as they are able to demand for more services, you see the emergency of the quaternary sector and it keeps rising so for our assignment we're going to do this question study figure one uh, 6.1 which is a graph showing information about employment structure of sweden uh, MEDC. and uh, myanmar and ledc uh, then you will be able to answer the questions that follow let's take a look at this properly uh, you could pause the video and be able to see the graph very well. 
So question number one is plot a cross on figure 6.1 to show the following information about the employment structure of Ghana. So primary has 45%, secondary has 15%, and tertiary has 40%. So go back to the graph and be able to plot. And then Roman 2, give one example of primary employment and one example of tertiary employment. So the gaps there. And Roman 3, using information from figure 6.1 only, and you need to take care of that word only, you see how it has even been put in bold. So don't think about answers from outside, only look at the figure provided. Compare the employment structure of Sweden and uh, Myanmar. And then finally, suggest reasons for the difference in employment structure between Sweden and uh, Myanmar. So try to do this exercise and we will catch up in the last lesson of this topic and that's going to be globalization and we will conclude with this topic. Thank you very much. Subscribe.